Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia, let's talk books, and today I'm here to talk about all of the books that I read in August. Um, I am still keeping up with um, kind of the different categories and the diversity in the books that I'm reading, but I haven't figured out a great way to share that with you all without just like listing things. I want to create like a nice little graph, and it's actually not that difficult, but I just haven't sat down and done it. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and share the books that I finished in August, starting with Whose Body by Dorothy Sayers. So this is the first in the um, a Lord Peter Wimsey series. So Carson was actually the one who uh, recommended these books to me because of the audiobooks. She said that the first one um, is actually not narrated narrated by the same person in the audiobook so I went ahead and got it in physical form um, and this one was okay I think it was just such a shift from what I was reading at the end of the previous month Tree mystery novel like just the pacing was slower um, and you know I, I used to read a lot of Agatha Christie and I haven't in a while so I was just not used to the style um, so I ended up giving this um, three out of five stars um, so uh, I will be continuing with the Lord Peter Wimsey series but I'll be checking them out in um, the audiobook. The next book that I finished in August was Bone Cross. Um, this is book number four in the Mercy Thompson series. Um, this was a good book. What did I give it? Four stars because it was action-packed. Okay, if you like plot in your books, the Mercy Thompson series has tons of plot. Um, this one had maybe a little too much plot, <laughs> but I love the characters. I love the dynamics. I love just everything about it. So um, it still hit the spot, um, but I did have to take breaks while reading it. So it was just there was a lot going on um, and so I, I took breaks while I was reading it where usually these books are ones that I can just pick up and like read in one sitting kind of a thing. Next up is from the Love Sugar Magic series by Ana Mediano, A Dash of Trouble. This is a middle grade Latinx story about brujas. <laughs> And everyone who talked about this, recommended this book, was absolutely 100% right. It is an adorable, wonderful book. Be prepared to be hungry while reading it. The family in the story owns a bakery. And so I have had such a craving for pan dulce. It is just, I'm going to need to get my hands on some um, soon. But, um, so you follow this little girl who is seeing her family keeping secrets from her um, and she's gonna find out that they are brujas. <laughs> Next on um, my list of books I read in August was Medical Bondage, Race, Gender, and the Origins of American Gynecology by Deidre Cooper Owens. If you're interested in the history of medicine um, and th those kinds of topics, I would recommend this book. It's short. Uh, some chapters are a little bit heavy but I do feel like the first couple of chapters are the most important and that is where uh, Cooper Owens goes into uh, some of these founding fathers of the gynecological field in the U.S. and shows us that the black women they use, the black slave women they use for their experimenting, for their surgeries that, you know, that made them famous were, were slaves, right? That these women didn't have the ability to give consent to be part of these experiments and that they were actually really important in the development of this field and they have not gotten the credit. It also also speaks to this theme of the way in which black uh, female bodies have been used throughout history to develop kind of very whitewashed professions and ideas and the injustice of it all. Um, this she also goes into in the last chapter she goes into the way that after the end of slavery like people who were doing these kinds of medical experiments needed a new group of vulnerable people to experiment in and that um, Irish immigrant uh, immigrants became kind of the source of that and you know basically the exploitation that has been inherent in a lot of medical developments 
yeah, I will be talking about this book and these topics in one of the classes that I'm teaching this um, this semester. I'm teaching a class on the history of reproductive rights, and so I will be making race and class really important elements of it because it just is. It has always these themes have always been present in this history, so I do recommend this book. The next book that I finished in August was That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole. I love Alyssa Cole. Um, if you like Hamilton, uh, the musical and all those stories, uh, you will probably like this book. This is following um, one of the women that helped um, Hamilton's wife write like his memoirs and preserve his legacy and uh, as she falls in love with another woman. And it, it was cute. Uh, and I, it didn't hit the spot quite the way other Alyssa Cole's books have for me, uh, but this was, was quite good. So I gave it three out of five stars and um, it's a novella. It's short, so I really recommend it, especially, like I said, if you're really into Hamilton, that time period, and you want a good sapphic romance. Next, I read Reproduction on the Reservation, Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Colonialism in the Long 20th Century by Brianna Theobald. This is such an important book. The field of like Native Studies is, there's still a lot of work to be done to fully understand everything um, of this history. This one in particular really kind of emphasizes that uh, the kind of eugenics that was developed in the U.S. didn't just use immigrant women. Like um, if you've seen the documentary film No Mas Bebes, you will know that the field of eugenics um, was that California was at the forefront of that field. And a lot of there was a lot of forced sterilization of especially Latinx immigrant women. And um, what this book is adding is that this kind of um, experimentation, eugenics type of things were also affecting uh, women on reservations. Um, and it, the context is, is quite different because of the kind of power and colonialism that was going on in the reservations is still going on in the reservations and it was just it was a fantastic read i also it also goes into some of the native women that became nurses and that really helped to bridge the gap between scientific medicine and native practices on reservations and it's just such a well-told story. Um, I found it quite accessible even for non-academics, so much so that I will be assigning a chapter of this book to my students. And it's just, if you're interested in topics of reproductive rights, this is one of those fantastic um, books that I am highly recommended. It does really good history, just excellent. The next book that I finished in August, where'd it go? <laughs> was always running La Vida Loca Gang Days in LA by Luis Rodriguez. This is another uh, book that I'll be using in one of my classes. Um, I don't have a choice on this one actually, but it turned out to be a really good book. If you're looking for a book um, that is a kind of memoir of somebody's life um, in, in the gang world, I think this, this does a fabulous job of taking you through that. It also gives you a really a window into East LA at, in the 60s that is one of the, my takeaways from uh, from this um, content warnings a lot of content warnings for violence for rape sexual assault um, gun violence just a lot of that uh, was happening and the author takes you through his experiences with that but also through the activism that a lot of um, latinx and black students had to develop in East LA in order to get simple things like you know brown and black teachers in the school district. Um, most of the teachers teaching at the public schools were white and most of the student body was not and that created a lot of conflict and a lot of injustice because the racism from the white teachers really really came through and you really see that um, here. So um, I do recommend that you see all my tabs in here because I'm going to be reading this with uh, one of my classes, but um, it's a good book. I think I gave it, what, four? So it's probably more of a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but um, I do recommend it if you're looking for something like this for uh, Latinx Heritage Month, which is coming right up. 
Okay, the next book was Bloody Bones. This is book number five in the Anita Blake series. I can't talk much about some of these books that are, you know, like four fifths in a series, but the Anita Blake um, series is really, it's really nice. I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. This was another one of those super action packed. I gave it three out of five stars because I didn't like it as much as some of the earlier books. So this kind of like, it took the series in a little bit of a dip for me, but, um, yeah, but I'm gonna keep reading because I'm really into into the characters. It's this kick-ass woman who raises the dead and um, can do other things, can do lots of other things. There's also a love triangle in this one that I already know is gonna be developing in um, a really fun way. <laughs> so that's all I will say here. This was a fun mystery um, of the week kind of story and I am really looking forward to see where the rest of the story goes. So I'm moving on to the next book. Next was a buddy read that I did uh, with Shannon over at That So Poe. We read The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you know I I'm really enjoying Silvia Moreno Garcia's books. This is one of the few books that I hadn't yet gotten to. And it's really, one of the things I love about her as a writer is that she's not afraid of just switching genres. Like her books are all in like different subgenres, and she does such a fantastic job in each one. This one was earlier in her career and I can see where she was developing certain things. It's set in 19th century Paris. Um, kind of a turn of the century when there's lots of things changing there are lots of things in flux in society um, we're following a main character who is kind of a social climber so it's a kind of social climber story he's been in love with this woman his whole life but she has married into the aristocracy she was a member of the aristocracy and now she's inaccessible to him except for her husband's cousin Yes, her cousin, um, who is just entered the marriage market, and the, he sees her as his way into his excess life. Um, lots of um, social drama ensues. This is one of those books where there's not a lot of action. There's a lot more character analysis and character development. Shannon talked more about what some of her critique of this book um, was um, and so I will link her video down below for you to check out. I really enjoyed this book because it really fits the genre of romance quite a bit and it was just what I needed when I started to read and I recognized some of its flaws in, um, here like there are there's characters that could have been handled a little bit more complexly things that could have been a little bit more unexpected than they ended up being um but but it really hit the spot for me like it was just exactly what I needed as I was getting more and more stressed trying to prepare for the for teaching the fall semester remotely all my teaching is online and it's the first time that all my teaching is online so you know it was a lot of uh, a lot of pressure and this book was a very it was just an excellent companion <laughs> The next book that I read, I am going to limit what I say on it because I'm going to do another video on it. It, it is Lobisona um, by Romina Garber. This is a recent uh, YA Latinx um, inspired book and it's about a, were a female werewolf, a teenage werewolf who doesn't know she's a werewolf. Um, every month she takes pills that kind of send her into a bit of a coma so that she doesn't experience like the full transformation. Um, the theme of immigration is very related here. She's an immigrant from Argentina, so it's her mother. She's undocumented and the fear of that really overlays, uh, is intertwined with the fear of what she goes through every month. I, it's a really really nice story it has flaws I think this is this might be the author's debut um so like not everything was evenly paced um there were some like the theme of immigration was just a little like knock you on the head with it um but it really plays with important themes and one of the things that I think it does really wonderfully is the way it talks about menstruation and it's not something I see every day in books so the 
the next video I'm going to do is actually going to talk all about menstruation and fiction um, and um, largely inspired by my reading of Lobisona. The next book I finished uh, was Who Fears Death by Nettie Okorafor. Okorafor has now become like a must read. I need to read everything she has ever written because I have really enjoyed and loved everything that she has written, everything I've read from her. Um, Who Fears Death is one of a, the longer books I've read of hers. I didn't realize how long it was because I read it on ebook, but it is an amazing story about it's this like post-apocalyptic African set story which you follow this character who uh whose mother was um raped she was raped by a kind of colonizer group of, of men and on purpose like the purpose was to rape her and the child we follow you know we're seeing how her life is affected by being the product of this rape um how how she doesn't fit into a society in which she is clearly the product of of, of rape because of her skin color she's got lighter skin and so obviously um doesn't fit in but how she tries to there's a lot of magic involved in here um a lot of kind of almost like religious practices involved in magic and it's also about kind of parenthood and parent-child relationships um a found family is it's just a really beautiful book obviously lots of content warnings for you know the on the page rape which is a continuing theme throughout the story um for violence uh for a lot of misogyny a lot of sexism a lot of racism um all of that is in this book um but i thought it was very beautifully beautifully handled um by all of War. Next, I will I will try to not say too much about You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria because I just posted a full review of it. It's a uh, Latinx romance novel and it is fantastic. If you need a little joy in your life, pick up You Had Me at Ola because it's going to give you that and then some. There we go. <laughs> Lastly, right on time to fit into this um, wrap up, I read The First Rule of Punk by uh, Celia Perez. This is another, okay, if you need joy in a fast, easy read, this is the book for you. Uh, the First Rule of Punk follows a young Mexican-American woman who's really into punk music because of her father, like he introduced her to it. Her mother's a professor of literature and she just got a job in Chicago. So off she goes to Chicago with her mom and she is having to make friends in this new school and figure everything out. And she doesn't feel connected to her Mexicanness, even though her mom keeps kind of like pushing her on it. And it's about, you know, one of the themes is that there's no right way to be a Mexican American. And I just... I filled my heart with love to read this book. Um, yeah, it just really hit home, even though uh, I'm an immigrant, so I'm, you know, I'm not first or second generation like the main character. But that idea of finding your, your people, your community, finding where you belong and merging all the different parts of who you are, right? Um, yeah, it was just beautiful. And if you love punk music, you're going to love this probably even more because there's a lot of that happening in here. Uh, personally, I'm not, but like I could appreciate how the author was bringing it in. It was just so fantastic. So that is it. <laughs> that is, those are all the books that I read in August. Um, and overall, I had a really great reading month. Um, even though um, it was not as much as I uh, usually hope to read um, but I was also doing all the preparation for classes so I that every September every August um, this happens I start reading a little bit less because I'm focusing on my students and on setting everything up for them but let me know if you've read any of these books I would love to chat anybody that's recently read um, Who Fears Death I really want to chat to someone about this book um, or any of the other ones Lobisona Keep an eye out for that, um, that video coming up next. But um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.